Thank you, Sarah. Welcome, everybody. I'm happy to be talking to you today about a new spodumene rich uh, pegmatite deposit from Plumago Mountain, Oxford County, Maine. Uh, it's a spectacular pegmatite with huge crystals and is going to be a very important source of lithium in the future. Uh, the deposit is located in western Maine in Oxford County, uh, located about right here on this geologic map where you can see that it's on the northern margin of the migmatite granite complex uh, near the contact with the amphibolite face these rocks. Uh, the deposit is on Nuri Mountain, which is here just uh, north of Nuri, Maine, and the deposit is about one mile northwest of the Nuri Hill pegmatites, famous Nuri pegmatites on uh, Plumbago Mount. Uh, this map by Barton and Goldsmith, 1968, uh, is a detailed map of the area. It shows the location of the Dunton Gem Pegmatite, which is here, which was a 1972 uh, discovery of the fantastic Gem uh, Tourmalines. And this is the location of Twin Tunnels that many of you probably have seen or know about this, this location. Plumbago North is located here on the north side of Plumbago Mountain, and uh, it's in a site that was uh, previously mentioned by Barton and Goldsmith in their report that there was spodumene in this area. And this is where the uh, Plumbago North pegmatite is being uh, exposed. The mineralogy is uh, relatively simple. It's quartz, spodumene, albite, and muscovite. Uh, which counts for 92% of the rock, but it's incredibly enriched in spodumene, 53% spodumene. There's upwards of uh, uh, between 1 and 2% monobrasite. Uh, there's very little uh, K feldspar at all. There are triflite, lithiophyllite nodules around. Shoral is almost absent. Very little uh, shoral, no, no boron. Uh, no barrel to speak of. There's some cesium-rich barrel in, in some pockets. It's actually quite cesium-rich, uh, but a uh, very small amount of barrel. There is some pyocyte, but not much. There's some few pieces that have been found. The uh, columbite group minerals like the trithi, trith, trifolite, lithiophyllite, or manganese, and iron, ferrocolumbite, and mangoneno uh, columbite. So this is what makes up uh, the pegmatite. And uh, let's have a look at it here. We have uh, the open pit. So we're, uh, we're standing about 60 feet below the surf, original surface of the ground here. The pit's been opened up. Uh, this is Gary and Mary Freeman. They are the owners of the uh, pegmatite and Brian Patterson, a miner that works with them. And this is Al Fouster. Most of you know Al. This attic that you see here was opened up to explore for uh, uh, pyocyte, Al had found in a core that came down about in this area that there was some uh, pyocyte in the core at this elevation. And so they were checking to see if there was any additional pyocyte there, which, which there wasn't. But you already see some of these spodumene uh, crystals here, huge crystals at the surface where they were originally opening this up. You could see these uh, weathered spodumenes laying in the in the in the pegmatite uh, six or eight foot 10 or 12 foot crystals here's a big crystal over my head inside that attic where we were sampling some micas this face is a, a fresh face down at the 60 foot level and it really shows you very nicely the textures of the spodumene crystals like jack straws scattered about here. It's almost like a log jam of these giant uh, spodumene crystals. Here's one that's, uh, you know, upwards of 12 feet long and great big, huge crystals. So you can easily see why an area like this would have 50% uh, spodumene in it in the bulk, bulk content. So we had a look at rubidium uh, in the feldspar and muscovite to get a, a, a handle on just how evolved this pegmatite 
uh, was the KRB ratios and the K feldspar range from eight and a half to about 30. These were up near the surface. The eight and a half uh, were, were down in the spodumene producing zone. Uh, the muscovites that we looked at uh, were around 14. This uh, plot of rubidium versus KRB uh, shows the uh, enrichment here. And you can see that the Black Hills are not as enriched as, uh, as Greer Lake and Tanko. Tanko is a good uh, one to compare with. And uh, the lower values of KRBs are, are right, right on Tanko here. And so the, the Plumago North is similar to Tanko and KRB, but it is uh, not as enriched in the rare elements, tantalum, fluorine, and cesium, as the, as the Tanko deposit. But it is incredibly enriched in lithium. So it's super enriched in lithium. In lithium and it's present as spodumene in gigantic crystals. Here you can see a huge crystal over my head. Here's a 12-foot crystal with Brian and an excavator for scale. And this is, uh, it just blows my mind, this uh, image here. Here are some buckets for, five-gallon buckets for scale. This is an eight, eight or 10-foot uh, spodumene crystal. And this is a single crystal of monobrysite. And it's five feet on the edge. Truly remarkable, huge crystal of uh, monoprosite. Here's a 25 foot uh, long spodumene crystal with Mary Freeman as scale. And here's Brian measuring out uh, the biggest uh, spodumene crystal that they've uh, uh, measured so far. This is 11 meters, 36 foot spodumene crystal. Just incredible, huge world-class crystal. And this one isn't as big, but uh, it's the most photogenic, I think. Uh, this 15-foot crystal, and here's Frank Parama for scale. So beautiful, huge, big crystal. We were hoping to get some pieces of this uh, to put on display in the museum, but you see all these fractures in it, and it's very uh, difficult. So far, it's proved impossible to get any very big pieces. And they just break apart when you when you try to uh, excavate them. So how big are they uh, in comparison? Well, they're right up there with the largest ever found in the world. Uh, the uh, etapegmatite had the world's largest spodumenes, and they were on the order of 12 and 14 meters in length. And you see here a uh, comparable crystal from Plumbago North, where we have 11 meter crystals. So very similar in size, not quite as big, but almost. The uh, monobrysites are not as big as the amblegonites, but they, these are really probably uh, most certainly uh, monobrysites. And uh, they're not as big as these, but they're still incredibly huge and world-class crystals, the largest of their kind in the world. Uh, we did some uh, analyses of the ore material, the bulk composition. Uh, uh, 50 kilograms were sent out to lithium consultants in Australia. They came back with an analysis of 59% spodumene, 32% quartz, 7% albite. And the lithium analysis was very high at 4.76 compared to spodumene with only 8%. That's really, really high. So. 40, another uh, sample was sent to Germany for analysis, and we got 48 weight percent and 4.6 weight percent uh, lithium oxide in there. So the average of these two is 4.668 uh, weight, weight percent. So what's the potential uh, resource? The surface exposures that have been uh, measured out at 300 by 600 meters, and core drilling indicates that the spodumene bearing zone exceeds 20 meters in depth. That cranks out to 3.6 million cubic meters of ore with a density of 2.69, uh, gives 10 million metric tons of ore. If you use 30% spodumene, which is a whole lot less than, than is being uh, analyzed right now, but I just chose this number randomly as uh, uh, I didn't 
don't think that it's going to hold out at 50% for the entire 3.6 million cubic meters. So anyway, just at 30%, that's over a million cubic meters of spodumene at a density of 3.15 is 3.4 million metric tons of spodumene. And that's a lot of spodumene. And if you use today's price of uh, spodumene at 450 a metric ton, that cranks out to $1.5 billion, a very significant uh, resource of lithium. How does it compare worldwide? Let's look at these two on the, the chart. Uh, these are the top 13 uh, spodumene mines and prospects worldwide. Plumbago North is here at the top of 10 met million metric tons. You see it's got 4.68 average lithium content, and that's way higher than any of these others. Uh, uh, more than two times higher than most of the ones in this list. And if we want to see how they uh, uh, plot out, we can look at a log line plot of million metric tons of ore versus uh, lithium oxide weight percent. Uh, and what these blue lines are are lines of equal uh, lithium oxide content. And you see that Plumbago North falls in here just shy of half a million tons of lithium oxide, a huge amount of lithium oxide. And it's exceeded or equaled only by green bushes in Mount Marion in uh, Australia, Wabuchi in Canada, and perhaps a Holman beam in North Carolina. So if these numbers hold out, this is going to turn out to be one of the top lithium producers in the world. And uh, We'll just have to see if it if it holds out to do this. But uh, even if these numbers are, are off by a factor of two, it's still a huge uh, amount of lithium and a great lithium re resource for the United States. So thank you for your attention.